Today I am going to show you how to use your time cards page. If you are an administrator or a manager, you have access to this time cards page on the website. Uh, depending on your capabilities as a manager, you may be able to edit time cards. So if you are able to make edits to time card entries, you can join me. Go ahead and log in as an admin or a manager, and we're just going to click on our time cards icon. In our time cards page, we have time cards at the top. Under options, we show our predefined pay period that was set up in our time clock settings. We can see an employee filter right here, where we are able to select a specific employee and filter down that way. Up at the top, we also have more options. This is going to give you more filtering options where you're able to customize a date range, add dates that are within your pay period, department worked, department manager job, all different things that you're able to filter by. You can customize any type of date range, and then we'll just rearrange that information on the screen for you. You will get a warning uh, just letting you know that if this does not fall within your pay period, it may not coincide with your pay period for overtime calculations. If you're not satisfied with your search, you can reset the search and that's just going to reset your filter options. If I scroll down, I have some time card entries here and I need to edit my employee, test employee. To edit this time card, I'm simply going to click on the edit pencil over here and it's going to bring up this adjusting day for test employee. I'm going to add a lunch. So to do that, I'm going to add punch and then I'm going to scroll down. I want to change my out time to the out time that this employee should have been out for lunch. So I'm going to put 12 p.m. Then I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to go ahead and just put 1230. This is when they came back in from lunch. And then I'm going to enter my original out time of 5 p.m. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So now that record is updated. Now you might be wondering, where is the punch in and out that I just added? So if I come back up to the top, in my filtering options, I have show right here. And if I put a check in punches, this is going to give me more details in my time records down in the bottom here. So now when I look at test employee that I just edited, you are able to see 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 12.30 p.m., out at 5. And we even give you how many hours that was. It looks like my employees have not punched in today. If I need to add a day for an employee, up here at the top, I have different tools to use. We're focusing on adding a single day which is this add day button. If I click this, it's a similar box to that adjusting day that you just saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and select today's date. I'm gonna select my employee. I'm gonna go ahead and hit add punch. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and enter in the time that the employee arrived at work today. And then I can go ahead and hit save and then you'll see that that updates. That is how you add a single day. You can also add multiple days with this add multi-day tool. The way that this works is on the pay period that you have selected, we give you the dates up at the top. You can select your employee and you can go ahead and enter in regular amounts of hours worked, uh, possibly PTO time if they were on a vacation. You cannot add in single punches here, but just straight hours. So you could say eight hours across the board and hit save and add multiple days at once. You can add PTO to a record, so we'll just use this example right here. I'm going to go ahead and open up this record for editing. Now say that this employee didn't come back after lunch, so I'm just going to erase this punch out. And they used four hours in PTO. So down here on the bottom of my adjusting day, I have PTO hours, and I can actually enter in four hours and it's going to automatically calculate, so it's going to add four hours here. But we do want to add and make sure that this employee gets paid for the four hours that they did work. So I'm looking at work four hours. I'm going to add that into my regular hours worked. And now this is going to total to eight hours, four regular, four PTO. 
You'll notice it says punches overridden by hours. This is just letting you know that you did come into this record and that you did make a change. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit save so you can see what that looks like. So you'll notice the strike out here just indicating that you did come in and make this change, but you can still see those original punch in and out times. And then we get this little red indicator just to let you know that a change was in fact made to this record. Now, when it comes time to export information from your time cards page, on the top right we have these gold buttons. We have print, email, export, more. These are our report options, so export CSV. This is our standard CSV file format. And you can use this format for most payroll providers to upload in. Here's how that looks. Print is going to do a PDF version of this information. And then email, if you were to email this over, you can actually select how you would like this to show. So you do show details, show totals, enter in a email address and then a message if you'd like, and then send the email on over to your payroll provider. And this will send both the CSV and the PDF copy. Now under more, we actually have different options for reporting. And these are the various options that we have currently. So you might have paychecks export, you can find our paychecks export in here, sure payroll. We also have an audit log export. So if any changes were made to your time cards, you can actually export that and take a look. We also have a notes export as well, so if you are allowing employees to leave time card notes and you just wanted to grab that kind of report, we have that as well. You are able to view the audit log right on the time cards for more detail, so if I check audit log under show here, you'll notice it shows all the updates that I made and who made them. So Sammy, the administrator, made all these changes. Now if you were a manager, it would say manager. If employees can make adjustments, it would say the employee tag right here. Now we do have archive up here at the top. So some people like to close out their pay period. One way that you can do that in on the clock is using the archive tool. So here's a past pay period in my time cards. You can see that I have time card entries here. Archiving is going to create a historical record of this information and now this information cannot be changed, so no one can come in and make an edit. Only an administrator is going to be able to archive a time card. Managers cannot do this. We also have a time card approval feature. So right here on the bottom underneath my filters, I have time card approval. This is just going to allow you to take a look at your time cards. Let's go to our most recent pay period here. You can hit this forward button. Select all time cards, turns the slider green, puts this little check mark. So if I want to approve, I just put a check in and then I can hit approve. It's going to ask if you're sure you want to do that. You're going to hit OK. And then you'll notice this little icon here, and this just says that the administrator approved on 428-2020 in the time and then by who. And when you do your PDF printoff, it will show that the time card was approved by you. And that is how the time cards page works.